I present. On any bite? I'm going to step off the land now. That's one small step for man. It has already been more than 40 years since Neil Armstrong put the first human footprint on the moon. Since then, we have made discoveries down here on Earth that have more impact on our lives than his giant leap for mankind. In 2010, NASA completed an assessment of Earth that arrives at a startling conclusion. In this century, 40% of the natural ecosystems of this planet, our only home, will change to become something else. That means that nearly half our forest, grasslands, and tundra we like to wander around in will change dramatically within the lifetime of many now here. How can that be, we might ask? Or more importantly, what will that be and why? Here in the West, the answers to the what question are as varied as the geography, but we're beginning to get hints about them. For examples, we might start with Montana's Yellowstone River, the longest free-flowing stream in the lower 48. When you think of a place like that, you imagine cool, pristine waters, with speckled trout hiding behind colorful rocks. And when John Coulter first described it, that is what it looked like. But in just the past 20 years, smallmouth bass have moved up the Yellowstone more than 40 miles, benefiting from water flowing warmer, slower, and lower. Headwaters in the park are shaded less these days because the high elevation pine forests have been decimated by mountain pine beetle. Those same weather patterns are having an effect across much of the Rockies. In just the last 15 years, beginning 25 years after the moon landing, the mountains and valleys of Colorado have turned red. Mountain pine beetles have killed forests at an alarming rate growing from isolated outbreaks in 1996 to entire forest of fire-prone bleached snags. The why has mostly to do with a series of warmer winters that have allowed the beetles to attack trees that are stressed by their changing environment. As a rising Pacific Ocean impacts the growth of underwater plants critical to the security of fish, Young salmon looking for a place to hide and grow big in the coastal estuaries of Washington State will likely not find those places. Even though precipitation across the state has not changed as much as in many other western states, the iconic mountain glaciers are retreating, stream flows are changing, and salt water is rising, tied to a planet's changing climate, beyond the control of state fish and wildlife management agencies. In Oregon, we find that fire, a natural force often friendly to wildlife, has taken on new meaning and not a good one. Cheat grass, imported from Europe in the 1880s, not only gets stuck in your clothing, but it's bad for wildlife too. As Oregon's sagebrush steppe environment has become warmer, fire frequency has increased. Cheat grass quickly invades the spaces left by the fire and creates a mat so dense that native plants used by wildlife, like sage grouse, cannot come back. And then, because the ground becomes so thoroughly covered by dying cheat grass, it unnaturally burns again, creating a hot and vicious cycle. These are just a few of many changes taking place across the West. They may not seem too threatening yet, now as we begin a new century, but as they increase, we must consider future generations, and we must care on behalf of those not present, those unborn, without voice or vote, for whom the moon will someday orbit an Earth much different from what we've enjoyed for so long. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth.